What's going on all my recruits? I hope you guys are having a great day. So in today's video, we're going to be covering the Dread Incarnon. In this Incarnon uh, guide or review, we're going to be going a little bit more in depth because the Dread actually has a lot of unique properties just in its first evolution. So evolution one will actually be explained in this video compared to my other ones where we just cover it slightly because usually it doesn't have so much with it. Next, we'll go over all the other evolutions, the two builds, test them in the simulacrum, and then we'll go right into a Steel Path uh, survival mission. So let's go ahead and cover those evolutions, shall we? So a little bit before the video starts, if y'all want to show your support and you've been sticking around for a uh, while, make sure you guys hit that like button and do subscribe and turn on that bell for post notifications. And you always get notified whenever I post a new video. The support does help and it shows that y'all do appreciate all the guides and reviews I do for weapons that people stopped reviewing after a time. So let's get back into the video. So, like I said, we're going to cover Evolution 1 a little bit more in depth before we go into the rest. So, with Evolution 1, while it does sacrifice your silence for increased projectile speed, I mean size and heat, you are also gaining an increase in base damage, crit multiplier, and stash chance, just like most weapons. You'll be also gaining an infinite body punch through, which means you'll just keep going through every enemy. However, whenever it comes to activating this Incarnon, you'll lose all your puncture damage, your headshot multiplier will be set to 1 times, and you'll have a slightly slower charge time. So not that bad, but it does make using a primary deadhead a little bit harder to use to Evolution 2. With Evolution 2, you have Hitman's Opportunity, which increases your base damage by 70 and will give you 100% damage to enemies below half health. And you have Stalker's Resentment, which will increase your base damage by 50. With Hate and Despair equipped, your hits will also give you, give you uh, plus 10 base damage and it will also give you plus 10% fire rate and will stack up to 5 times, but it sadly resets on missed hits. So why don't we use that one over the other one? Well, when it comes to Stalker's Resentment, it, you'll be more than likely using Split Flights, so you're going to miss a shot. What, what about the other option of uh, just using and just dealing, uh, not using Split Flights? Well, but due to Infinite Body Punch Through, you're eventually just going to hit a wall and lose the buff anyway, so overall, Hitman's Opportunity is just edging it out for me, but you can obviously use whichever one you prefer. Next up is... Evolution 3, you have Swift Deliverance, Marksman's Focus, and Hitman's Horde. Swift Deliverance will give you plus 30% projectile speed, Marksman's Focus will give you minus 30 zoom, and Hitman's Horde will obviously, like it said, give you more ammo because it's a horde, up to 144. This is multiplicative with ammo uh, maximum mods, so if you really felt like it, you could keep going and going and going with ammo. So, which one should you pick? This is all dealer's choice. I prefer the projectile speed. You may prefer the zoom. You may prefer having more shots, but pick your poison. We'll be going with swift deliverance. Finally, with evolution four, we're given three options. We have survivor's edge, elemental balance, and zeroed in. With survivor's edge, you increase your base crit chance by plus 10% and your base stash chance by 10%. You increase your base stash chance by 24 with elemental balance, and you'll uh, increase your base crit damage multiplier by one times with zeroed in. So when it comes to this option, it is very dependent on what you like. I personally like going with more crit and more status, but you may want to go all status or you may just want to go for a pure crit damage multiplier increase. I think the crit damage multiplier increase isn't that necessary due to how some mods work. So I pick Survivor's Edge for my build, but pick whichever one you like. Let's go ahead and cover those builds, test them, and then I'll see y'all in Steel Path. All right, so we have two builds for y'all today. We have a Riven build and a non-Riven build. Obviously, if you do have the Riven I have, you'll be using the non-Riven build. But if you do have one similar, you'll try to copy the Riven build. So I'll cover both, test both, and then I'll just pick a random one to take into the uh, mission. So when it comes to the Riven build, we're using Split Flights, Hunter Munition, Vital Sense, Vigilante Fervor, Thermi Rounds for more heat, Critical Delay for even more crit, and we have a Prime to Bane mod. You obviously don't need to use this, put whatever you like. And my Riven is Crit Chance with Colton Toxin, so I don't have to build Viral on the weapon. Overall, this build is quite strong, and I do love using it. If you wanted to, you can put Galvanized Scope over Vigilante Fervor. Downside is it will be shooting a lot slower than it needs to. You can replace Prime Bane Orican with, if you want, Galvanized Aptitude, but it does bug out with one of the evolutions. I believe it's Evolution 2. I think it's the uh, Hitman's Opportunity, but I, don't, I couldn't be 100% on that. Next up is the non-Riven build. The non-Riven build obviously has much, much lower crit chance, higher status, but we still use split flights. We're still using hunter munitions, vital sense, vigilant fervor. This one actually has galvanized uh, app too, because I find it useful on this one. Prior rounds, infected uh, clip, because these are flat mods, we need a little bit more status and galvanized scope for the crit chance. You could use critical delay and on both of them, we're using primary merciless due to how the headshot multiplier works. Put both builds uh, up against each other so y'all can see how they work. And then we'll go into a still path mission. So let's show off the ribbon build first. So first up will be the Riven build. So as you see, it shoots quite fast. It's not having any real issues killing and the numbers are really, really high. And as you see with how split flight works, we're getting a ton of arrows, but at the cost of being inaccurate. So at once you get your incarnate on full, proc it. And as you'll see, it does work with the um, split flights mods. So we're just multiplying a lot of our um, projectiles and it's just 
It causes a lot of mayhem. So as you see, quite a strong build. But what about the other one? Does the other one compare to this one? Let's find out. All right, so that was obviously the ribbon build. As y'all saw, that was the last one I picked. So let's go ahead and show off the non-ribbon build. Once again, we need to go for headshots so we get our Incarnon to get ready. Our crit's a little lower due to how galvanized scope works, but after a couple headshots and a couple of um, just kills in general being scoped in, you'll see it'll go up quite nicely. And once our thing is full, procking Incarnon, and how does it work now with this one? Well, I'd say it does about the same. I mean, look at that. Killed quite nicely, killed quite quickly, and still has a ton of the arrows. I'll go ahead and figure out which one I want to take by just picking between one and two on a uh, random number generator. I'll go to the survival mission. I might do Murmur, or no, it's hard to get crits on this. I might do Oregon, and I'll see y'all in there. So we're in Steel Path. Now I want to make a statement for obviously we kill anything. I am quite dumb and completely forgot that I didn't have game audio on because the last video I recorded was a Elden Ring video, so... It was still set to that, so I do apologize for the earlier clips basically having no audio. But as you can see in uh, inside of our little survival mission here, if I would stop getting myself killed because I'm trying to talk. I mean, we're not having issues outside of me dying because I'm stupid. But the weapon's hitting quite hard, especially since I'm able to hit my headshots. And even without having to hit my headshots, it does do a lot of damage, as you can see. Look at that. So keep the Incarnon up and pop. Now, it does have a big flaw where if you do hit a... Um, a wall, I'll show you. Oh, that didn't work. Usually, unless they at some point fix it, but as it seems, they do have appeared to fix it. Fix it? Fix it, which is quite nice. So let's get out of this corner before I uh, keep dying. So, as you see, I'm able to keep the Incarnon moving. I'm able to keep moving. And if my aim was a little better, you'd see that I'm actually able to hit my headshots, but clearly not. There you go, 1.5 million. As you can tell, it's not struggling outside of me just being a really, really bad player. I shouldn't have, I probably should not have brought Saren into here because I still need to build her correctly. Still haven't finished anything with her. If you had Galvanized Scoped and want to sacrifice being able to draw your sh uh, strings a little faster on your weapon, you'd be able to hit even higher crits as I was testing it. I was hitting like 125 million crits, but that was once again with my, um, with my Riven. So viewer discretion on that one, may not use it, should use it, it's up to you. So, uh, I'll keep going through here and stop trying to, uh, look cool while I'm trying to use a weapon, and I'll see y'all whenever the Acolyte spawns. So, all right, and the Acolyte is finally spawning, so who are we getting? Ah, Misery. All right, so where are they? There you are. One, two, three. Well, damn. And see, that does quite, quite well, actually, so... I still don't see any issues. It's got good ad clear. Perfect spreading with uh, spores on. The only reason I turned them on is because I got tired of being uh, surrounded. So I'll see you all back in the orbiter after I have a little bit more fun in this mission because I'm actually having a lot of fun using the dread again. How does it mix with Toxic Lash, I wonder? Yeah, it doesn't really do that much, does it? All right, I'll see you all back in the uh, orbiter. All right, and we're back in the orbiter. I do apologize for having no game audio during the, the showcase of the weapon. I didn't realize until after, so. So be it, right? So when it comes to the build, what do I think about it? How do I think about the weapon overall? When it comes to both of them, the weapon is still very strong. The Dread and Karnon easily could carry you throughout the entire game. I think it could even, the Dread alone could carry you through the entirety of the normal star chart. Is it the best in Karnon? No, obviously the Torrid, most people would uh, say is the best one. I like the Dread personally. I like the Burst on, I like the Soma. I like a lot of the Incarnons and Torrid. It's all right. It's not my favorite though. Things you could change, obviously, this mod right here does not have to be primed. You can use normal. You could also use galvanized uh, chambers instead of split flights. You can use galvanized um, aptitude instead of prime bay and organ. Uh, pick whatever you like. Use primary deadhead or primary merciless. Both work. Or if you have it, longbow sharp shot. I don't have one max, so I obviously didn't use it. And here's the Saren build. In case you wanted it. It's really bad. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Afternoon, evening, morning, midnight, whatever time zone super scrub is your time. If you uh tell me what guns or weapons, frames you might want to see me review next. If I ever get the time since college is starting back up, I will be reviewing uh Corvex with his augment. And I'll tell you this right now for basically free, that augment is quite strong. It's just still gonna be really hard to use due to how one of his abilities works. I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace out, everybody.